Hi, my name is Indy and I'm a, a tutor for Home I Learn. Today we'll be covering a lecture on the basics of an accounting system. So we'll be using slides which are actually from the VLA uh, system itself, the online environment that you've actually obviously now got access to. So let's get started. Um, title of the presentation is the basics of an accounting system. You can now look at the slides uh, that appear on the screen, which we'll be going through one at a time. So we'll start off by showing you an overview of what we're going to be covering today. So we will start off with an introduction to the account system, so exactly what an accounting system is. We'll also look at the accounting cycle, which is actually all the steps that apply in an accounting system. We'll also look at financial transactions, which are effectively the transactions that apply when we're buying and selling goods. So all the transactions that we need to be thinking about um, when we are buying and selling goods. Next we'll be going on to ledger accounting. Uh, ledger accounting is a very fundamental part of accounting which we really need to get an understanding of. So I really want you to focus on that in particular when we, we get to that. And then finally we will come across a, co a concept called or a production of what is called a trial balance. A trial balance is a very key part of accounting again and is one step away from uh, us producing the financial statements which are used by a business. So moving on to the next slide which is the accounting cycle itself. There are sort of effectively six steps that we need to go through when we actually produce, um, we go from the starting point of a transaction, so when we're buying or selling a good, to the end point where we actually produce the output and we actually record the financial uh, information that arises from those initial recording of the transaction. In between those steps we actually have something called books of prime entry which are very fundamental to accounting which we'll be covering a lot in this module on basic accounting. As I mentioned before ledger accounts come off um, the initial recording of a transaction and are used to prepare um, a trial balance which comes on later and which are the records that we use to store certain categories of, um, of uh, items as mentioned financial statements at the end. So these are the steps that we're going to be covering uh, a bit more detail now um, as we go along today. So looking at the accounting cycle, um, as we just mentioned, it starts off with a financial transaction and ends with a, a set of trial balance of financial statements. Um, points that I've already covered, so let's move on to the next slide. So as I mentioned before, stage one is identifying the transaction. So a transaction is effectively us going into a shop, buying some goods, or it could be from the, uh, the shop's point of view, the shop actually selling us an item. So there's probably two sides to every uh, transaction, buying and selling. Um, when that happens, we always produce, or as you'd expect, we often produce a, docu a document which records that transaction. So as you can imagine going into Sainsbury's or, or a retailer, um, we actually get a receipt from Sainsbury's to say what we've, produced, what we've bought. If we uh, were buying some uh, materials from a, let's say, a DIY shop, we'd actually get a receipt from, from um, Wix or B&Q. So the similar thing, we've got a transaction there. There are also other types of transactions, which um, or documents, which things like um, delivery notes. So from the point of view of Wix or B&Q, they're actually buying goods before they can sell the goods. And so they will actually be receiving a delivery note which will actually be saying what they've actually bought. We'll be going into source documentation a bit later on uh, in another lecture. The key thing um, which I've sort of alluded to is every transaction has a dual impact. So we have a sales on one side, so that's the customer going in buying the good, but from the seller's point of view they are actually selling an item and in return for that we get a payment in exchange. So that's actually cash coming into the business from the supplier's point of view. 
So there's always usually two uh, entries that are involved, and I'm alluding to something that we're going to really cover, um, or we covered in lecture one, which is a double entry principle. And this is again just reinforcing that point. Just moving on to um, the next slide. And this is actually probably very key to understand at this point. Um, the, probably makes it makes obvious sense but there are two ways of actually making a payment one could be immediate so in the case of most of us going into a shop we go in and we buy the item uh, immediately for cash or even if we use a credit card pretty much instantaneous the second form of payment uh, could be delayed and this is almost when we are invoiced for the item so this could be um, um, it could be a builder where we're uh, we've got a builder helping us uh, build an extension and that builder may not ask for the money immediately but they may actually ask for that money maybe 30 days or so after they actually complete the work so there's actually we call this a credit transaction so similar to a credit card we don't actually make the payment immediately a really key point particularly when we actually get into the accounting entries uh, and the use of ledger accounts so there's a point here I've just said, as we mentioned in lecture one, uh, if you've looked at lecture one, um, double entry bookkeeping, uh, we need to distinguish between cash sales or purchases and credit sales or purchases. So moving on to the next slide, um, we've sort of covered this in overview. We have, uh, when we make a purchase, we can make a purchase in two ways. One is actually when we actually acquire the goods or services for a resale to its customers. So that's Wix buying goods or Wix or b q buying goods from its suppliers. Um, in this case it could be let's say some roof tiles. Buying some roof tiles from a supplier and then they sell it on to us as a customer as we walk in and we buy that. So that's actually called a purchase item. And you may think well that's obvious but we also need to distinguish another category called expenses. So expenses are anything which are not directly related to the item being sold. So if we're selling roof tiles or if B&Q or Wix are selling roof tiles, we also have a category of expenditure which Wix will incur things like its employees uh, paying for the, the rent of the premises which we don't classify as a purchase but we classify as an expense. So um, we include items like electricity bills, utility bills, and salaries of staff, as I mentioned. This is now stage two we're going on to, which is the books of prime entry. First time we've been in we're introducing you to the books of prime entry. And what I just want you to really understand for now is there's actually sort of probably four or five categories of books of prime entry. So there's a sales day book, a purchase day book, and this is where this is important to note that these are actually credit sales or credit purchases. These are not cash sales, not cash purchases. So the sales day book and the purchase day book looks at any customers or suppliers that we have that we haven't paid immediately. A very key point that I want you to uh, make a note of, uh, maybe now. Um, in contrast, we have two other sets of books which are related but almost work in the opposite way. And in simple terms, they're credit notes of the business. So we may we may buy something or we may sell something, but then the customer, uh, in, in the case of a uh, a sale, may want may return that item. If he returns the item, we would record that entry in a sales return day book. So similar to a credit note. Day book, we call this a sales return notebook. From the um, from the buyer's point of view, the buyer would actually record it as a purchase return, and it will go into the purchase return day book. So returning goods made on the credit supplier terms to a supplier. The final one, which is a very key a key book, which you're going to be using a lot over the coming uh, months, is the cash book, and is a very key part of uh, basic accounting one. This is all cash transactions, so regardless of whether they're credit or cash, there will be uh, a combination of both types of purchases, uh, types of cash or credit sales. Um, there are some multiple choice questions and some activities which I'd really recommend you looking at.